This is the responsible car. Slammed into this one. Shunted mine. Mine's wrecked. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't have managed to hit this one as well. <sighs> Hello. I've come down to the yard at nearly eight o'clock for a special video that I wasn't really expecting to do. Earlier on today, Eric and I and my wife and my two girls were involved in a shunt. First of all, everybody's okay. Okay besides, well actually, okay besides a strange kind of pain up the back of my head and into my back. And the missus is kind of the same. My girls were hysterical and my thumb hurts. But we'll come back to that afterwards. You might think, oh, I've had a little shunt. He's cashing in on it. Yeah, I am. I am. I definitely am. I thought, one of the things I thought, oh, I could make a video of this. And I can. It's my right to make a video of this. And besides that, I've put it on Facebook and I've had lots and lots of questions. So it is my duty uh, and in my interest to actually show you the damage to the car. Basically, this young lad came over the brow of the hill, wasn't looking enough to actually stop, and ran into this car behind me which then ran into me and there was nothing I could do but run slightly into the car in front of me. The car in front of me didn't really bear any damage though whereas poor Eric has. This is it, I mean that bumper, that bumper's obviously ruined isn't it? And split. The crash cans behind there are broken. Underneath the bonnet we can see the there's a slight bit of defamation I think. Um, but not much, it's the radiator. The radiator's been pushed up against the rest of the gubbins there and split. So the car lost all of its coolant. As you can see, there's none left in there. Bonnet is uh, bent somewhat. Mm. Amazingly enough though, the wings seem to have survived. I don't know whether they're headlamps. Are... Ah yes, we have a broken lug on this one. So there's uh, likely to be some of the damage just under there. Uh... We'll look through the front grille there, looks like there's some the cross members a bit bent as well. As we all know, a car of this age will be written off just for that front bumper. Ow! Oh, never mind the cross member and the radiator. That'd be enough. And then we've got the bonnet as well. But of course, I don't give up easily on these, do I? Trouble is though, the only reason it's got this damage on the front is because of what happened behind. And this is a lot worse. That um, is a bit more than a bit of superficial damage. For that tow bar to bend right over there like that. Good old boaty managed to make a joke out of it looking like it's poddering itself which uh well it does doesn't it substantial dent on the tailgate but the actual worst bit of course is the worst bit is beyond that these rear lamps popping out like that they haven't done that for no reason they've done that because the whole thing's been pushed in if i have a look under here we can see Uh, then we can see the floor pan is actually bent. Substantially bent, in fact. Yeah. This car is probably what you would call dead. It's a dead car. Although it still works. Still drives. So yeah, I am um, not too happy because <laughs> I, am, I have been waiting for a chap to come along and pay me a deposit on transit phase. He came to see it the other day, said he definitely wants it, and I've been expecting him back. He didn't turn up. And that has meant that I've been in a situation where I think, right, well, I'll have to sell something else. And this car was that 
which seemed like a strange choice because this has been my everyday car. It's a diesel, so it's very, very economical, and it's it's just a good car. But obviously, money pays bills. Cars don't. I put this car up for sale um, just before I set off. I set off. Half an hour later, this happens. So yeah, why shouldn't I make a video? Why shouldn't I make a video straight away? Monetize it, hope it gets loads and loads of views and get more money out of it. Even, even this, even if you want to make a donation to the channel or me, I'm gonna, here's my email address, do that, do that because, <laughs> because this is not what I wanted to happen for the day. So what about the people? Well, I can honestly say that my, my thumb is hurting quite a lot, my leg's hurting quite a bit, but then often it does, and I've got this kind of shooting pain at the back of my neck. My wife, who was sat there, is, has some similar symptoms, plus a headache. But my girls in the back, who would have borne the brunt of the uh, impact, uh, were hysterical. They, they were really, really very, very upset indeed. And not only that, we was talking about this car being up for sale. And they really like this car. They said, don't sell this car. We want to keep this car. We love Eric. Anyway, they seem to be okay now. I am thankful for a couple of things though. One is that I was in this car and not Nigel because I was tempted to use Nigel. And although, of course, there's a, there's a possibility I would have been in a slightly different place just for driving a different car, um, I prefer that to happen to this. You might wonder, how does an accident involving four cars happen on a 30 mile per hour limit? It really shouldn't, should it? But the thing is, some people aren't really looking where they're going. And once you get that proper big impact, there's very little you can do about it when you're at the front of this. Just noticed under there, that's the the bumper support is, uh, well, smashed, isn't it? Had I not been in rolling traffic, I may well have been stopped with my foot on the brake, even the handbrake on as well. And then this would have been a slightly different situation because I wouldn't have rolled into the car in front, but the car would have taken even more of the impact and it wouldn't have taken a great deal more for that screen to have shattered. And personally, pain is that my two little girls were just there and glad that didn't happen because it's a traumatic experience enough as it is without being showered in glass. As it goes, the back end of the car stood up okay. Had I been stopped, that door might have been jammed. I would certainly say it's so. It's this side, oddly enough, is a bit buckled as well. But it wouldn't have taken much more for those doors not to come open. So now begins the process of insurance companies, multiple claims. Hopefully I won't be losing out on my no claims insurance because this really wasn't my fault, even though I run into the back of somebody else. I don't really know how it works. Four cars involved, is that four sets of claims that have got to be made? Or is it just all done off of this one from this chap who ran into the back of us? Four cars got injured in this, whereas of course, had he just, if there was none in front, it would have been just two cars. I would also like to say, there were quite a lot of nice people knocking around who were very comforting towards my girls, which was very helpful. Because actually, what happened is nobody even phoned the police. I was busy trying to deal with these and then going off getting some CCT footage from across the road um, and then it also dissipated. Senior Mustard came down to help out and he took my wife and girls back to the yard where I limped Eric home. It was only a mile which meant that although he'd lost all of his coolant just by driving carefully and switching off, rolling, switching on briefly and got him back without any kind of issues well any danger of the engine overheating so that's still fine but uh well there we go that's your video for tonight i was going to come down here and do a live stream then i thought i could turn this into a live stream but actually it'd be nice to just go home and relax 
Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.